Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Saul. And I am here today to read you the book, Ramona the Pest by Beverly Cleary. This book is a chapter book and it's one of the very first chapter books that I fell in love with when I was your age. And it's all about a girl named Ramona and her family. And before we get started, take a minute right now and think about what do you think that means? Ramona the Pest. What does it mean to be a pest? Hmm. Well, hopefully you're thinking that a pest is someone who is bothering you or maybe getting on your nerves or annoying you. So a pest is kind of a word we would use to describe someone or something that bothers us. Like a fly could be a pest but sometimes a brother or sister could also be a pest. We still love them, but sometimes they can be a pest. So before I start reading, I wanted to just remind you that um, when we read a chapter book, it's really important that we are using our visualizing skills. Now you remember that visualizing means that you are kind of making pictures in your mind, like a movie in your mind and imagining what is happening because there are not a lot of pictures in a chapter book. So here you can see the cover, and you might also notice on this slide that it says chapter one, part one, Ramona's Great Day. So chapter one is actually titled Ramona's Great Day, but I'm not gonna read you the whole chapter today because it's quite long. So I'm only gonna read you the first part of chapter one. And you also might notice a picture of Ramona skipping along. She looks very happy there. So I wanted to show you a couple of the pictures that were in the book to help you get an idea of what Ramona kind of looks like. But most of the other things that happen, you're going to have to use your imagination and you're gonna to have to listen carefully to the story so that you can hear clues that are gonna help you make a picture or a movie in your mind. Okay, so here we go. We're going to read Ramona the Pest, Chapter 1, Ramona's Great Day. I am not a pest, Ramona Quimby told her big sister, Beezus. Then stop acting like a pest, said Beezus, whose real name was Beatrice. She was standing by the front window, waiting for her friend, Mary Jane, to walk to school with her. I'm not acting like a pest. I'm singing and skipping, said Ramona, who had only recently learned to skip with both feet. Ramona did not think she was a pest. No matter what others said, she never thought she was a pest. The people who called her a pest were always bigger and so they could be unfair. Boys and girls, you might notice that this book, part of it is kind of being narrated by Ramona. They're telling you what Ramona's thinking. Ramona went on her singing and skipping. This is a great day, a great day, a great day, she sang. And to Ramona, who was feeling grown up in a dress instead of play clothes, this was a great day, the greatest day of her whole life. No longer would she have to sit on her tricycle watching Beezus and Henry Huggins and the rest of the boys and girls in the neighborhood go off to school. Today, she was going to school too. Today, she was going to learn to read and write and do all the things that would help her catch up with Beezus. Oh, boys and girls, that part makes me kind of smile because Ramona's going off to school for the first time, which tells us she's going to kindergarten. And she thinks that on her first day of kindergarten, she's going to learn to read and write. And that makes me smile because you know, since you've already been in kindergarten, that on the very first day of kindergarten, you don't come home knowing how to read and write, but you begin learning. So Ramona, I think, 
has very high expectations. She thinks she's going to come home reading and writing, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Let's keep reading. Come on, Mama, urged Ramona, pausing in her singing and skipping. We don't want to be late for school. Don't pester, Ramona, said Mrs. Quimby. I'll get you there in plenty of time. I'm not pestering, protested Ramona, who never meant to pester. She was not a slowpoke grown-up. She was a girl who could not wait. Life was so interesting, she had to find out what happened next. Sorry about that. I skipped ahead. Then Mary Jane arrived. Mrs. Quimby, would it be all right if Beezus and I take Ramona to kindergarten? She asked. No, said Ramona instantly. Mary Jane was one of those girls who always wanted to pretend she was a mother and who always wanted Ramona to be the baby. Nobody was going to catch Ramona being a baby on her first day of school. Why not? Mrs. Quimby asked Ramona. You could walk to school with Beezus and Mary Jane, just like a big girl. No, I couldn't. Ramona was not fooled for an instant. Mary Jane would talk in that silly voice she used when she was being a mother and take her by the hand and help her across the street and everyone would think she really was a baby. Please, Ramona, coaxed Beezus. It would be lots of fun to take you in and introduce you to the kindergarten teacher. No, said Ramona and stamped her foot. Beezus and Mary Jane might have fun, but she wouldn't. Nobody but a genuine grown-up was going to take her to school. If she had to, she would make a great, big, noisy fuss. And when Ramona made a great, big, noisy fuss, she usually got her own way. Great, big, noisy fusses were often necessary when a girl was the youngest member of the family and the youngest person on her block. All right, Ramona said Mrs. Quimby. Don't make a great big noisy fuss. If that's the way you feel about it, you don't have to walk with the girls. I'll take you. Hurry, Mama, said Ramona happily, as she watched Beezus and Mary Jane go out the door. But when Ramona finally got her mother out of the house, she was disappointed to see one of her mother's friends, Mrs. Kemp, approaching with her son, Howie, and his little sister, Willa Jean who was riding in a stroller. Hurry, Mama, urged Ramona, not wanting to wait for the Kemps. Because their mothers were friends, she and Howie were expected to get along with one another. Hi there, Mrs. Kemp called out. So, of course, Ramona's mother had to wait. Howie stared at Ramona. He did not like having to get along with her any more than she liked having to get along with him. Ramona stared back. Howie was a solid looking boy with curly blonde hair. Such a waste on a boy, his mother often remarked. The legs of his new jeans were turned up and he was wearing a new shirt with long sleeves. Boys and girls, I hope that gave you a good picture of what Howie looks like because Beverly Cleary told us that he was a boy with curly blonde hair. And he was, the legs of his jeans were turned up. That means that the cuffs of his pants, of his jeans were rolled at the bottom. And he was wearing a new shirt with long sleeves. So I hope those clues helped you make a picture in your mind of what, how he looks like. Let's keep reading. He did not look the least bit excited about starting kindergarten. That was the trouble with Howie, Ramona felt. He never got excited. Straight-haired Willa Jean, who was interesting to Ramona because she was so sloppy, blew out a mouthful of wet Zweiback crumbs and laughed at her cleverness. Today my baby leaves me, remarked Mrs. Quimby with a smile as the little group proceeded down Clickatat Street toward Glenwood School. 
Ramona, who enjoyed being her mother's baby, did not enjoy being called her mother's baby, especially in front of Howie. They grow up quickly, observed Mrs. Kemp. Ramona could not understand why grown-ups always talked about how quickly children grew up. Ramona thought growing up was the slowest thing there was. Slower even than waiting for Christmas to come. She had been waiting years just to get to kindergarten. And the last half hour was the slowest part of all. When the group reached the intersection near Glenwood School, Ramona was pleased to see that Bezos' friend, Henry Huggins, was the traffic boy in charge of that particular corner. After Henry had led them across the street, Ramona ran off toward the kindergarten, which was a temporary wooden building with its own playground. Mothers and children were already entering the open door. Some of the children looked frightened, and one girl was crying. We're late, cried Ramona. Hurry! Howie was not a boy to be hurried. I don't see any tricycles, he said critically. I don't see any dirt to dig in. Ramona was scornful. This isn't nursery school. Tricycles and dirt are for nursery school. Her own tricycle was hidden in the garage because it was too babyish for her now that she was going to school. Some big first grade boys ran past yelling, kindergarten babies, kindergarten babies. We are not babies, Ramona yelled back as she led her mother into the kindergarten. Once inside, she stayed close to her. Everything was so strange and there was so much to see. The little tables and chairs, the row of cubbies, each with a different picture on the door, the play stove, and the wooden blocks big enough to stand on. The teacher, who was new to Glenwood School, turned out to be so young and pretty, she could not have been a grown-up very long. It was rumored she had never taught school before. Hello, Ramona. My name is Miss Binney, she said, speaking each syllable distinctly as she pinned Ramona's name to her dress. I am so glad you have come to kindergarten. Then she took Ramona by the hand and led her to one of the little tables and chairs. Sit here for the present, she said with a smile. A present, thought Ramona, and knew at once she was going to like Miss Binney. Uh-oh, boys and girls, I don't know if you just noticed what happened, but Miss Binney, her teacher, um, walked Ramona over to a table and a chair and said to sit here for the present. And Ramona thought, a present? Hmm, I think that Ramona thinks maybe she's getting a present, but I'm not sure that's what Miss Binney meant by that. So let's keep reading and find out. Goodbye, Ramona, said Mrs. Quimby. Be a good girl. As she watched her mother walk out the door, Ramona decided school was going to be even better than she had hoped. Nobody had told her she was going to get a present the very first day. Oh, I think we're right, boys and girls. I think that's what she thinks. What kind of present could it be? She wondered, trying to remember if Beezus had ever been given a present by her teacher. Ramona listened carefully while Miss Binney showed Howie to a table. But all her teacher said was, Howie, I would like you to sit here. Well, thought Ramona, not everyone is going to get a present, so Miss Binney must like me best. Ramona watched and listened as the other boys and girls arrived. But Miss Binney did not tell anyone else he was going to get a present if he sat in a certain chair. Ramona wondered if her present would be wrapped in fancy paper 
and tied with a ribbon like a birthday present. She hoped so. As Ramona sat waiting for her present, she watched the other children being introduced to Miss Binney by their mothers. She found two members of the morning kindergarten especially interesting. One was a boy named Davy, who was small, thin, and eager. Eager means that he's kind of excited and really curious about what's going to happen. He was the only boy in the class in shorts and Ramona liked him at once. She liked him so much, she decided she would like to kiss him. The other interesting person was a big girl named Susan. Susan's hair looked like the hair of the girls in the pictures of the old fashioned stories Beezus liked to read. It was reddish brown and hung in curls like springs that touched her shoulders and bounced as she walked. Ramona had never seen such curls before. All the curly haired girls she knew wore their hair short. Ramona put her hand to her own short straight hair, which was an ordinary brown, and longed to touch that bright springy hair. She longed to stretch one of those curls and watch it spring back. Boing, thought Ramona, making a mental noise like a spring on a television cartoon and wishing for thick, springy, boing-boing hair like Susan's. Howie interrupted Ram Ramona's admiration of Susan's hair. How soon do you think we get to go out and play? He asked. Maybe after Miss Binney gives me the present, Ramona answered. She said she was going to give me one. How come she's going to give you a present? Howie wanted to know. She didn't say anything about giving me a present. Maybe she likes me best, said Ramona. This news did not make Howie happy. He turned to the next boy and said, she's going to get a present. Ramona wondered how long she would have to sit there to get the present. If only Miss Binney understood how hard waiting was for her. When the last child had been welcomed and the last tearful mother had departed, Miss Binney gave a little talk about the rules of the kindergarten and showed the class the door that led to the bathroom. Next, she assigned each person a little cupboard or cubby like we call them. Ramona's cupboard had a picture of a yellow duck on the door and Howie's had a green frog. Miss Binney explained that their hooks in the cloakroom were marked with the same pictures. So boys and girls, we have cubbies that have room to hang our coats and to hang our backpacks and to put our lunch boxes and our papers. But in Ramona's classroom, she had a cupboard where she could um, put her backpack or her lunch box, but then they had another separate area where there were hooks where the children could hang all of their coats. Miss Binney asked the class to follow her quietly into the cloakroom to find their hooks. Difficult though waiting was for her, Ramona did not budge from her seat. Miss Binney had not told her to get up and go into the cloakroom for her present. She had told her to sit for the present. And Ramona was going to sit until she got it. She would sit as if she were glued to the chair. Howie scowled at Ramona as he returned from the cloakroom and said to another boy, the teacher is going to give her a present. Naturally, the boy wanted to know why. I don't know, admitted Ramona. She told me that if I sat here, I would get a present. I guess she likes me best. By the time Miss Binney returned from the cloakroom, word had spread around the classroom that Ramona was going to get a present. Next, 
Miss Binney taught the class the words of a puzzling song about the dawn's early light, which Ramona did not understand because she did not know what a dawnser was. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, sang Miss Binney. And Ramona decided that a dawnser was another word for a lamp. Friends, that was very funny. I don't know if you picked up on that part, but Ramona is singing a patriotic song like we do after we do the Pledge of Allegiance. And she thought the words were the dawn's early light instead of the dawn's early light. So she's very confused. And she says, I don't know what a dawn's is. That's funny. When Miss Binney had gone over the song several times, she asked the class to stand and sing it with her. Ramona did not budge. Neither did Howie and some of the others. And Ramona knew they were hoping for a present too. Copycats, she thought. Stand up straight like good Americans, said Miss Binney, so firmly that Howie and the others reluctantly stood up. Ramona decided she would have to be a good American sitting down. Ramona, said Miss Binney, aren't you going to stand with the rest of us? Ramona thought quickly. Maybe the question was some kind of test, like a test in a fairy tale. Maybe Miss Binney was testing her to see if she could get her out of her seat. If she failed the test, she would not get the present. I can't said Ramona. Miss Binney looked puzzled, but she did not insist that Ramona stand while she led the class through the Dawnser song. Ramona sang along with the others and hoped that her present came next. But when the song ended, Miss Binney made no mention of the present. Instead, she picked up a book. Ramona decided that at last the time had come to learn to read. Miss Binney stood in front of her class and began to read aloud from Mike Mulligan and his Steam Shovel, a book that was a favorite of Ramona's, because unlike so many books for her age, it was neither quiet and sleepy nor sweet and pretty. Ramona, pretending she was glued to her chair, enjoyed hearing the story again and listened quietly with the rest of the kindergarten to the story of Mike Mulligan's old fashioned steam shovel, which proved its worth by digging the basement for the new town of Poppersville in a single day, beginning at dawn and ending as the sun went down. As Ramona listened, a question came into her mind, a question that had often puzzled her about the books that were read to her. Somehow, books always left out one of the most important things anyone would want to know. Now that Ramona was in school, and school was a place for learning, perhaps Miss Binney could answer the question. Ramona waited quietly until her teacher had finished the story, and then she raised her hand the way Miss Binney had told the class they should raise their hands when they wanted to speak in school. Joey, who did not remember to raise his hand, spoke out. That's a good book. Miss Binney smiled at Ramona and said, I like the way Ramona remembers to raise her hand when she has something to say. Yes, Ramona. Ramona's hopes soared. Her teacher had smiled at her. Miss Binney? I want to know, how did Mike Mulligan go to the bathroom when he was digging the basement of the town hall? Miss Binney's smile seemed to last longer than smiles usually last. Ramona glanced uneasily around and saw that others were waiting with interest for the answer. Everybody wanted to know how Mike Mulligan went to the bathroom. Well, said Miss Binney at last, I don't really know, Ramona. The book doesn't tell us. I always wanted to know too, said Howie, without raising his hand, and others murmured in agreement. The whole class, it seemed, had been wondering how Mike Mulligan went to the bathroom. 
Maybe he stopped the steam shovel and climbed out of the hole he was digging and went to a service station, suggested a boy named Eric. He couldn't. The book says he had to work as fast as he could all day, Howie pointed out. It doesn't say he stopped. Miss Binney faced the 29 earnest members of the kindergarten, all of whom wanted to know how Mike Mulligan went to the bathroom. Boys and girls, she began and spoke in her clear, distinct way. The reason the book does not tell us how Mike Mulligan went to the bathroom is that it is not an important part of the story. The story is about digging the basement of the town hall, and that is what the book tells us. Miss Binney spoke as if this explanation ended the matter, but the kindergarten was not convinced. Ramona knew and the rest of the class knew that knowing how to go to the bathroom was important. They were surprised that Miss Binney did not understand because she had showed them the bathroom the very first thing. Ramona could see there were some things she was not going to learn in school. And along with the rest of the class, she stared reproachfully at Miss Binney. The teacher looked embarrassed as if she knew she had disappointed her kindergarten. She recovered quickly, closed the book, and told the class that if they would walk quietly out to the playground, she would teach them a game called Gray Duck. Ramona did not budge. So boys and girls, Ramona has not moved from her seat since she started her day in kindergarten. So I'm curious as to what's going to happen next because now the class is going outside. Let's keep reading. She watched the rest of the class leave the room and admired Susan's boing boing curls as they bounced about her shoulders, but she did not stir from her seat. Only Miss Binney could unstick the imaginary glue that held her there. Don't you want to learn to play gray duck, Ramona? Miss Binney asked. Ramona nodded. Yes, but I can't. Why not? asked Miss Binney. I can't leave my seat, said Ramona. When Miss Binney looked blank, she added, because of the present. What present? Miss Binney seemed so genuinely puzzled that Ramona became uneasy. The teacher sat down in the little chair next to Ramona's and said, Tell me why you can't play gray duck. Ramona squirmed, worn out with waiting. She had an uneasy feeling that something had gone wrong someplace. I want to play gray duck, but you... She stopped, feeling that she might be about to say the wrong thing. But I what? asked Miss Binney. Well, uh, you said if I sat here, I would get a present, said Ramona at last. But you didn't say how long I had to sit here. If Miss Binney's look had been puzzled before, she now looked baffled. Ramona, I, I don't understand, she began. Yes, you did said Ramona, nodding. You told me to sit here for the present and I have been sitting here ever since school started and you haven't given me a present. Miss Binney's face turned red and she looked so embarrassed that Ramona felt completely confused. Teachers were not supposed to look that way. Miss Binney spoke gently. Ramona, I'm afraid we've had a misunderstanding. Ramona was blunt. You mean I don't get a present? I'm afraid not, admitted Miss Binney. You see, for the present means for now. I meant that I wanted you to sit here for now because later I may have the children sit at different desks. Oh. Ramona was so disappointed she had nothing to say. Words were so puzzling. 
present should mean a present, just as attack should mean to stick tacks in people. <laughs> By now, all the children were crowding around the door to see what had happened to their teacher. I'm so sorry, said Miss Binney. It's all my fault. I should have used different words. That's all right, said Ramona, ashamed to have the class see that she was not going to get a present after all. All right, class, said Miss Binney briskly. Let's go outside and play gray duck. You too, Ramona. Okay, boys and girls. So I'm gonna stop there. That was quite a long part of the chapter and we're not even done. And um, I want you to think about what's happened in the story so far, how Ramona's first day of kindergarten is going so far. And this way, the next time we read, you can hopefully have some ideas about what you think might happen in the store in the rest of the chapter. So what else do you think might happen on her first day of kindergarten? And I can't wait to read the next part to you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you were making some good pictures in your mind. And until next time, see you later, Gators.